even with Jeff absent, I'm over in his seat. I've, I've never really sat on this side of the table. Um, I guess if, if tragedy strikes Jeff and he doesn't come back, Mm -hmm. we would just leave this seat empty. Um, and maybe put some, I don't know, some old newspapers here and just get one of those CPR, the dummies, you know, that they have and put his face. It's funny you bring that up because I'm, I'm a low level hanging comedian in that regard. I think of what would be the easiest joke to make. And I did think it would be funny to haul one of our mannequins in here and set Mm -hmm. it up and act like Jeff was here. Like every once in a while pan to him and be like, (laughs) I am so lazy. I'm like, God, I don't want to haul that thing all the way up there. That's why there's not one sitting in the seat right now. That's the only reason. So, um, my guidance counselor probably wasn't far off in school when she said that I probably wouldn't work really hard. So it's fine. Miss McGinnis. So we actually did that to Jesse. Um, he was out on a visit and we were having a growth meeting. So yeah. I put the mannequin in and, his place. and then I went and on his Facebook and printed out um, his profile picture, zoomed it and then yeah. printed out and then taped it right on the mannequin. And it was like he was there. Yeah. It was just like, and then we, he zoomed it. He like called in and we put it right there yeah. right in front of, yeah. Well, I, I've seen one, a cool thing about village caregiving spontaneous. This was not an internal thing. Mm-hmm. Some of the offices just kind of, they started getting their, their training mannequin and started yeah. dressing it up and then taking it places like weekend at Bernie's. And then it, they started challenging other offices. I think the Indiana team, if I'm not mistaken, the crew out in Indiana there, they started this war and boy, that our mannequins have traveled near and far. I've seen them on the back of uh, bulls at Mexican restaurants. <laughs> I have seen them at city parks. Someone's going to get arrested before this stops, but I'm hoping they take it to that point, if nothing else. So we'll let legal clean that up. Um, well, hey, welcome into the podcast. Um, we are we're, we're a little different today uh, for the viewers that, that haven't heard. We fired Jeff Stevens. Um, <laughs> Not just from the podcast, but from the company. Um, it was mainly behavior related. The man wouldn't turn his phone off while we were in here. So um, anyways, no. So Jeff is out of town. He's he's out on business and the podcast date landed today. So um, he, he gave me a lot of hints and tips on how to get through the day. Without him, I'm a lost arrow, you know. Um, but I'm going to try to get through the day without him. And I appreciate you coming in. Uh, so welcome to the podcast, Caitlin Carter. Where, where are you from? What office you work for and, and what do you do there? So I am from the Portsmouth office okay. and I'm the executive director there. All right. And my job is to keep the morale going. <laughs> so <laughs> I got you. Yeah. So you're out of the Portsmouth, Ohio office, mm-hmm. um, a former village caregiving office of the year, 2022, I yes. think is how that calendar yep. fell. Um, and so who do you work with down at the Portsmouth office? So downstairs, um, I've got Chaska, mm-hmm. who she's my director of operations. And then upstairs, we have Jesse and Whitney, and they are both the RNs. And um, we've got Kristen also. I have the regional. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, so Kristen uses the Portsmouth office, kind of a home base for yes. the, the region that she works in. Um, that covers Ohio and Michigan. So mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. So the Portsmouth office... You know, um, I don't know how much you know of the history of the Portsmouth office, but when I came to work at Village Caregiving, myself, I came to Ashland, Kentucky. Brittany Branham came to, at the time, Pikeville, Kentucky. And then uh, Andy Hess, who's general counsel, came to Southern Ohio. And so the Portsmouth area was really taking off for us, Ashland and then Pikeville. So we all kind of started about the same day. We all actually ended up in the Ashland office on the same day. Um, for Brittany's first day, I think my second day, Andy's maybe first week. So I, I have got to see the Portsmouth office really go from inception to where it is today to see it get crowned as office of the year was, was a huge deal. Um, to see all the things that's, and I should again, admit I am an Ohio resident. I'm, I'm from Southern Ohio. It's always been near and dear anyways. So it's been really exciting to see, um, all the 88 counties in Ohio be covered from that original launch out of the Scioto County market. So, um, how long have you been with us? Um, I'm going into my third month, Ooh. so I'm a, I'm a baby. Third month. Well, what, yeah. So what's your background and what's your professional background? So I came from hospice. I did business development in hospice. Okay. 
And then that kind of, I have to say, prepared me for this job. Yeah. And it was, uh, and I worked for hospice for about three years. Awesome. Okay. So, and for, for those that listen, you know, village caregiving in, in the home care space, we, we work hand in hand with a lot of different programs. Mm-hmm. Um, especially one, once a person gets into the later years of their life and their geriatric phase, there is going to be a ton of resources that's available to them, specifically yeah. in their home. Um, mm-hmm. And one of those is hospice. So people always ask, you know, can village caregiving be here when hospice is here, right? There's all kinds of members of a care team that is helping to make that life better to, to you know, help the family through, through challenging times and through changing times as levels of care happen. So you were prior to coming over to village caregiving, you already had a working relationship with us. Is that right? Uh, Yes. So one of the things I did with hospice was with our patients, I wanted to find what resources are out there for the elderly because we want to make them successful in their home yeah. and to stay at home. And um, I had come upon I, Kristen when she was in this position in Portsmouth office and uh, kind of, hey, non-skilled, you can have that and hospice and home care. And uh, she really, you know, was we kind of were able to help each other out. Yeah. So, um, you know, I could always I'm like, hey, I'd call her up first thing. Can you be able to take this patient and help them out at home? When when you were working on the hospice side mm-hmm. of care and you were talking to families about home care and about personal care to, to extend the stay in the home, what what were you looking for in a home care agency in when you would refer? If you were referring village caregiving to a family or saying, hey, here's this this opportunity, whether it's village caregiving or ABC caregiving of Sayota County, whatever the, the caregiving agency was, what, what were you hoping that agency would be able to provide to that family? Um, and I can tell you exactly how I kind of market even VCG okay. to patients. I would tell them, Hey, I've got this company. I know here's, you know, there are a few different companies cause we worked with, that was the one thing coming from the skilled side I got to work with all these companies. So I got to hear their reputation and I would always tell the patient or client that, you know, this company here, I have never heard one bad thing about. Um, they have a great reputation and I know the people, they're great people and they will take care of you. And that is the, that's the only thing I wanted was our patients to be taken care of. Um, and honestly, I never heard one bad thing about BCG. Cool. So when you come over to Village Caregiving, you obviously mm-hmm. had some connections to the organization. Mm-hmm. You, we had been at marketing events. There was one time that we ate at the Soda River together. We did, right? yeah. yeah. And um, so we, we had opportunities to, to stay connected during this point before you came over to the company. What has been some of the coolest things that you've got to witness in, in the three months since you came over that you maybe weren't expecting, uh, when, when you were originally going to join the organization? I would have to say, I mean, you guys definitely live up to your reputation. So it was when I transitioned over to this, it was a whole new world for me, but never a dull moment. Yeah. Um, it, you know, <laughs> keep you on your toes, but I enjoy that. I enjoy just, um, not the pressures, you know, when you come from a large corporation, it's more of the support and like, Hey, setting your goals and stuff. But I would have to say, um, things that I have enjoyed, um, just being able to help people being a resource and not feeling that pressure of, Oh, you better meet this, you know, you better meet this number and be able to just enjoy what I, you know, what I do. I got you. So, and to not disparage former employers or, or industries yeah. that, that were before you, but you, your background, you did come from, from a large company, right? Yes. You came from a, a national healthcare organization. Um, and we're not that in, in some ways we're still a very small company. We we're national. We're in many, many States. We have thousands of employees. We do thousands of hours of care every day, but it still feels so small and it still feels so local and connected. What has been 
uh, there's honestly some challenges when you work for a small company. I tell people all the time, yeah. right? If you want a company that has all the processes ironed out, I think GE is hiring and I bet they've got a process for everything, right? That's not village caregiving. We, we, every day we get better. Every day we identify things that we need to improve on. Um, so there's some positives, some negatives to that. Have you experienced those since you've come over? Um, well, I'll have to say this working for a large corporation, um, and I will, you know, they prepared me, they, training was great and stuff, but they had, you know, they have their own stuff they have to iron out also. Okay. Um, and every company is going to have that, but with village caregiving, you have the support and you have, you feel like you have like, Hey, if I've got a bad day or something, you reach out to someone and it's not it's not BS. Yeah. It's like, Hey, how can I help you? And you, you guys will actually come in and try to help and not just kind of, you know, Oh, we'll do this and this and then nothing happens. I got you. So well, cool. Well, I'm glad that's been your experience. Yeah. Well, tell me about your team. Tell me about the folks that you work with. Um, you named them a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. What's, what makes the Portsmouth office special? It's clearly the people that work there and yeah. you've got some really tenured people. Chaska Wireman has been with us for a really long yeah. time. Jesse Porter's been with us for a really long time. Um, you got some new team members down there, you being one of them. Yeah. What what makes your office special? I feel like we've come to a point like we we want to do well and we want to grow and stuff, but it's I feel like our communication stuff, we're able to they're excited, they want to grow. Um, and I will say, you know, hey, they were nervous about me coming over because I have been trained, as they say, as a hunter. I, that's why I do a hunt down business. And I'm, ha you know, I'm having to farm a little bit. I got and you. I think they were nervous with me coming over because they thought, oh, man, we're going to grow. You know, I'm going to go out there. So um, I think that now that they see, hey, I'm here to help you and I want us to do well, that I do. I believe that yeah. they're excited to uh, kind of grow and but. Like I said, I'm doing that at a, at a pace. I got you. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, well, what's a little bit about you? What do you do outside of work? Who are you when you're not at Village Caregiving? Um, well, honestly, I've got two kids that are, uh, <laughs> once one is in middle school and the other one is soon to be. So, um, it's that time of life where your, your life is revolved around them. Yeah. So at home, I just hang out with them and I hang out with the pets, I uh, my animals. I'm happier to be outside and just be, be home. I'm a homebody. I got you. Yeah. Or do you, do you live in a big city? Do you live out in the country? What's your, what's your uh, we live on a farm, a out, farm. Yes. With honestly, no animals, but, uh, cats and <laughs> <see>. dogs. So <laughs> a lot of room for them to roam then. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. Um, a lot of times when people listen to the podcast, it's folks that's looking to join village caregiving. Mm -hmm. There may be someone that's listening to this that is right now in the interview phases for Duluth or yeah. for um, Houston or the, the next city um, that we may be looking at. And they may be in a similar situation that you find yourself in. You're at a national organization. You had a good job. You're mm -hmm. making enough money to pay the bills. You had a path to success there. And some way or the other village caregiving has kind of come across their screen and they're now either through recruitment and talent acquisition or through being on Indeed. However, they're, they're now in this process and they're wondering, is this the right organization to, to join? What, what's some stuff that you would tell you if given the opportunity to go back to that, that phase of where you were interviewing for the position here? I would tell, so if I would tell myself, yeah. um, I would say, Hey, you know, you take every day, like it's a new day. And I mean, it, and I knew this from my previous job when you're in healthcare and stuff, things can happen. So when I came over here, I have to say that I was prepared to, I was like, even my most stressful day at the previous day will not be the most stressful day. So, um, I be, have an open mind. I got you. Um, and lean on your, don't be afraid to ask people for, for help, support and stuff. You know, I had big shoes to fill. Um, <laughs> Kristen, you know, she did an amazing job and I, you know, coming into a larger office and having to run it and people are used to certain, you know, uh, dynamics and stuff. So if you're coming into a big office, just kind of, 
be open um, yeah. and just listen to everybody and just, you know, you're there to support them. You're there to support the caregivers um, and also make sure that your clients are, are taken care of. Sure. You know, a challenge that we have at Village Caregiving and in the home care space in general is that it is still such an unknown sector of the healthcare um, environment, right? There, uh, I just saw the other day we were listed as a, as a um, home health provider mm-hmm. at, in a place. And it's like, man, that would be, that stinks. They still don't know what we are in that market, which can be very frustrating, right? Yeah. We, we've been around for, this is our 11 year anniversary this month. It is, you know, we're, we're making strides. The, the industry itself is, is getting national attention, but there is still this gap, this knowledge gap that exists. And when you were at hospice and, and now at village caregiving, a, a predominant role that you have is community education, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Why do you think that challenge still exists in Southern Ohio that when, if you encounter someone right now, their mother's in the hospital and they're about ready to discharge home that they may not even know these services exist. Where, where can we improve on that? Do you think? Well, and in, in different counties, like Scioto County, they knew, I remember, like they knew of hospice, but they had seen the commercials and stuff like that. With the elderly, a lot of them, they don't get out. They are in their homes and they are very trusting and they believe, you know, they, they lean on the hospitals to tell them like, hey, what resources are out there? Um, so maybe to get our name out there, um, definitely working with hospitals, doctor's offices, um, and then in, within the community, you know, they have community action. And But I still feel like, I mean, we would run into people like, oh, I haven't heard of you. Um, yeah. You know, so it's just getting out there. I do think um, a lot of people who need our services tend to, they have been to the hospitals. They've been to their doctor's office. I think that would be a big um, way to market and just get your name out there. But you have to also kind of trust on their, the professionals to make sure that, that hey, they are going to um, kind of market for you, you know, for yeah. you, let you know, you know, Hey, these are what the resources are. It's finding those people that care. Yeah. Um, and kind of want to go the extra mile. That is the challenge, right? Trying to find the person that is the the champion in that field or the the right case manager, the right social worker that, that wants to find all the right resources so that when that client situation does come across their desk, that they're able to connect them and plug them into the right spot. Mm-hmm. That that is so vital for us as an organization. I I was on a call earlier today with a director and they had some hesitation about being out in the, in the, the environment, being out in their market. And, and they, you know, you, you come very natural to marketing, right? Mm -hmm. That, That can be, people can have a lot of anxiety about that. A lot of apprehension about just kind of walking into an assisted living, walking into a rehab saying, hey, you know, I'm Aaron Gustin. I'm from Village Caregiving. This is what I provide. This is what we do. Yeah. I'm not here to sell you anything, right? And that's what I love about our industry. There is such a need. If if I ever found myself in a situation where I had to sell what we do, we're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> like this is, yeah. I, I'm not going to be able to pay my bills selling anything. So, but I, I love educating people and just letting them know that we're there. But this particular director was really struggling with the anxiety of, of, getting a schedule, getting a hold of the folks at these places that offer um, connections to the clients and the future clients that we may need and, and setting up marketing events. Like I said, that's something that comes really natural to you. A, I guess my first question is how, how did that happen? Have you always been an outgoing person? How did you become this hunter as you described yourself? Um, I've always been an outgoing person, but I have to say that uh, we went through a training program. Okay. And they taught us kind of how, you know, how to go out there, but I came in during COVID. So I was not able to get in the doors into a lot of these places. So what I had to rely on, honestly, cold calling. Okay. And that, but it was, people are more receptive to cold calling because you're not seeing other people and they, they would much rather talk to you on the phone than see you in person. Okay. Um, so that kind of got, my in and then I started to venture like hey you know if I develop a 
relationship with them over the phone, then I'm like, Hey, I'd love to come meet you, you know, in person. And then that was my next step getting in. And then I'm, I mean, I made some great friends and that's the thing. And when you go, you don't have to sell this. Like you said, um, every, you know, a lot of people, if they benefit from the program, if they qualify, they want these services. Um, and so more when it comes to marketing is one, you find out your need, find out their need, what they want, and then just find, you know, get a relationship with these people. Find, just know, you know, get to know them. And once you get to know these people and just become friends and stuff, then you don't have to like beg for business. Um, It's all they want, you know, they want their patients to be taken care of too. So, so you're sitting at home and it's a Sunday evening. You get up the next morning and it's work. We got to go, we got to go into work. Mm -hmm. And in, in the, the hunter role that you were talking about, you, you had to be pretty proactive, right? You had to have events scheduled. You had to have commitments made, follow-ups, those sorts of things. That discipline is something, just being completely honest, that that if you are not, I think, well-trained in Mm -hmm. that and something that you lean into, that can be the hardest part, the just doing the thing. If if I set the date, if I call Susie Smith, the director, and say, hey, I need you to go to lighthouse senior living of Gatlinburg on Thursday. Yeah. They, I know for sure they're going to go do it and they're going to kill it. Mm-hmm. It's the doing the things ahead of time that I think sometimes is where we get into trouble at. What advice can you give to our directors? That, because that's something that's your, obviously we all have strengths and weaknesses, yeah. right? That's something that's definitely a strength of yours. What, what kind of free advice if there, if you were going to give them the cliff notes to your book on marketing, what, what would you give a director that's struggling with that? The original pieces of that puzzle to get, to get that going, to grow their book of business. I would honestly, because what is new to me is now being in an office. I worked remote. I was Mm -hmm. straight. I didn't have an office. I worked out of my car. I was all over, worked at home, worked all over. So I would tell them start calling and still just be like, Hey, find out like who is the person that you need to talk to? Who does find out who does referrals? Um, call, you know, get a list. Google is your friend. Um, start looking like nursing homes. You want to look at the discharges, um, because that social worker, uh, nine out of 10 times they're going, that patient may need passport services may need private caregivers they're going to go home and they're going to need someone to help them out yeah so get in touch with them and that is a phone call and you can start there to make you feel more comfortable instead of just walking in on them because sometimes if you walk up they're just gonna have no time for it. they're gonna be <laughs> sure. like no i'm good you can leave and that's the same um you'll have more challenges i'll say at doctor's offices uh, but we call those at the gatekeepers yeah um but yeah no i would just try start by phone first. I got you. Yeah. That is something that, that is, and you, I'm sure you saw in your peer group and previous roles, people that did it really well and people that Mm -hmm. struggled with it. Um, every industry that, that has marketing outreach sales, whatever the thing is, it is something that is, uh, it seems like a hidden talent. Um, Mm -hmm. but so much of to me, I think is just accountability and being proactive and doing, being a self starter. Um, there, you know, if we just sit around and wait for the phone to ring, we, it probably isn't the best use of our time. Right. So, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, you're, you're right. You had to kind of switch gears. That's kind of, you alluded that at the start of the podcast, you had to come in and learn how to sit at a desk yeah. right, and, yeah. and hold a morning meeting and communicate, you know, beyond just yourself and, and be accountable for the actions of your team and stuff. So yeah. is that something you're, you're feeling good with? Are you, yeah, are you leaning no. into that? It t- I will say it took about um, a month or two, and yeah. I, then I got used to it because <laughs> I'm used to being able to, you know, um, some people say, oh, I can't work from home and all that. I was able to. I did actually my best business being on the phone and kind of starting it. So I had to transition, and now, I mean, the office is only like 12 minutes from my house. So it's not a big drive. Yeah. Um, and now I, yeah, I, I'm there, and... I know if I want to reach out, do market outreach and stuff, I always I can start making a calls because yeah. um, I'm top. I'm a someone who writes goals down and I do my list and we have what do we need to do? How do we need to get there? And so, cool. But, well. 
Well, and that kind of brings us to the end. The, the last question I have is what, what are your goals for this year for Village Caregiving Portsmouth, for your office, for your team? What, what are some of the things you guys are hoping to achieve this year? Um, I just want, we want to grow Passport more. So we want to do that and the VA and the private pay. So kind of have a diverse book of business. Yeah. And honestly, I just want to do, like I said, I have big shoes to fill. As long as I do, I just want to do well, you know, I, <laughs> to show that, hey, um, I was the right person for this position. Yeah. And um, just have everyone. I want to be a good manager. I want them to be like, hey, I know I can call Caitlin and she'll help me any way she can. So. Sure. Well, I, I think those things are going to happen. I think you have a, a tremendous team. Um, if you are going to step into an office that's already going, you, yeah. you hit the jackpot and being able to step into the Portsmouth office. Um, some of the most talented folks in our organization work in, in that office and, and do, you know, I, I think are leaders in their departments for mm -hmm. our company. Um, there, as you mentioned, that office has a lot of opportunities. Some of our offices are, are limited by which payer sources they're able to, to take and which clients are able to serve. Yeah. We're very, very fortunate in Ohio that we can accept most clients, um, whether that's through state funded Medicaid programs through the national VA programs, through our private payer family funded programs, long-term care insurance. We, we've really been able to diversify the, the clients we're able to say yes to. It has been one of the things I'm most proud of for our organization is that we daily try to find ways to say yes to everyone that needs our help. Um, on the way down here, I was on the phone with a local state senator's office trying to get an opportunity to say yes to a payer source that we've not been able to. It's not a situation that a uh, village caregiving is going to make fortunes on, but yeah. it's just, it's very disheartening when our staff has to say no to someone that's in need. We, we can find the staff to take care of them we will go to the ends of the earth to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but if we can't say yes, then it, none of it matters. So we're always trying to do that. I appreciate the fact that, that your goal is to be able to say yes to more folks in Southern Ohio that need our help. And yeah. I know because of that, um, you know, the, the people within our communities, I, I was raised in Scioto County. My family still lives there. Um, it, it's so special to us to be able to say yes to those folks that need us. So thank you for doing that, for continuing that legacy on that, that Kristen and the team started there. I, I think that the days are very bright ahead for, for Village Caregiving Portsmouth. So. Yeah, thank you. yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for coming in. We always end with the cheers, and we'll do this in honor of Jeff being absent. All right? All right. All right. Cheers. Cheers.